Hello guys, welcome back to Blender Point. My name is Sujat and today we have another tutorial for you. This time we are going to learn how to create a bento box as well as how to texture it using procedural materials as well as AI generated textures. So let's begin. So for the first procedural texture as well as the setup for this bento box, I'll go back to my Blender scene. So let's jump right inside the blender scene as you can see i have this bento box selected and as you can see this has only four nodes that creates this bento box over here if i go ahead and show it to you you will see what i have done is i have created a grid over here and then extruded that mesh if i go ahead and select this noodle over here and connect this you will be able to see this is how it looks and i have actually extruded it by individual faces so if i don't do that then it will look like this but if i check this up then you will get this sort of a look then i have used the same extrude mesh mesh uh, the side selection of it and put it through another extrude mesh and i'll just drag this mesh over here and connect it out then you see the mesh has been extruded again and it gives it a little bit of more depth so now i have made another uh, material basically and set it to this node over here named set material and that's it so now if I go ahead and change the vertices, you would be able to see the slots actually do change. So now we can create different types of bento box as and how we like it to be. Uh, so now I only want a 4x4 four four grid. So I'll have this and then I'll just go back to my shading tab here this shading is a very simple shading and a simple simple shader that i have over here uh, what i have is a few wave textures over here that has been put through a color ramp and you can see uh, i have used some mixed color nodes to multiply them and also i have used some math nodes to also multiply them together to get a result like this if i go ahead and show you these are all wave textures that i have used to create this look if i go ahead and change the scale of it you would be able to see how it actually how it actually uh, you know affect the whole composition over here of the scene the whole texture over here as well as you can see if I increase or decrease it will actually act as a layer of uh, you know layer of coat to it and it will change how the texture looks so right now you see I just selected those scales and actually adjusted them to make all these changes very quickly now i have used the same uh, color and inverted it for the roughness of it now if i change the factor you will see the roughness increase or decrease as i select this factor and increase or decrease that i have used the same uh, color and used a little bit of bump so that we can get a little bit of extra bumpiness to the texture and it gives it a more realistic look uh, nothing more to this i have used some basic nodes to create this shader as well so this is a very customizable shader that we can use to create different sort of woods and wooden textures 
so now having said that i have another tool that i want to tell you about this tool is known as project z this is a stable diffusion based uh, stable diffusion based workflow that you would be able to get from the so you know from the website itself and i will give the link below let's go ahead and check that out so for that we are going to go back to our display and change some settings and then we will be good to go so now let's jump right into stable projectors 2.02 this is the latest uh, one right now so right now as you can see i have this box already over here which i exported from blender as a obj and now what i have here is a four camera setup you can see from here i have this four camera setup that we can actually go ahead and decrease or increase them as we like it and i have actually uh, you know put them so that put them such a in such a way so that we can get a good projection from the camera from all these cameras what we can do is right now is just click generate and it will actually go ahead and generate all the details right there right then uh but uh, everything over here you can see uh, you can click over here and move this as well a left click would change the position of it you hit alt and then left click and it will rotate the scene as well so these are very uh basic uh instructions you can go to this question mark and you would be able to see all of them over here itself so now what i need to do is just generate the art so right now it will start generating the art and we can go to this black window over here and you can see the progress being made so once it completes i'll go ahead and make the other adjust adjustments that we need to make so this is done now we can make the other adjustments uh, right now you can see the projection is not that good because the projection i don't think was uh, proper so we will make it proper once we uh, go ahead and select out of this now we click on this now what we have is four cameras we can select any of the cameras and go ahead and paint it out so i'll just go ahead and paint these textures out so that we have a better model and texture to work with so right now all i'm doing is i'm just checking if we have any textures over here that we can actually manipulate so we do not have anything else over here uh we have it on the second layer so let's use that and let's fill those gaps up sometimes you get this black color don't worry about it because it wouldn't show at the end so we can be very okay about this uh so right now this is almost done uh i can see it being okay right now this is just for an example uh so right now i don't have much to do i'll see if i can change this one or update this one let's go ahead and go to the first one and see no we do not have that uh we should have something over here 
uh, we will go back and check if we have it over here on the third one or not yes we have it on the third one so just go ahead and rub that in and now it's almost done uh, now let's go to the fourth one and see if we can do something over here on the third one if we have something no we don't so it's all about checking if we have anything that we can project on this texture all right i am done with this this looks fine for now all i need to do is see if this texture so i have been working on these textures for uh, you know for other purposes as well just to show you i'll just save this one and it's saved now we can go back to our blender we can select this we have an image texture over here we can select the texture that we just created and we can see that it actually looks quite good but now you see we have an issue over here we have this part that is not rendered at all so for that i have another solution i am using gimp for this you can use any other dtp software uh, but i'll use gimp for now so let's go ahead and open the uh, texture that we just created right now let's go to documents we have the texture over here i suppose let's check if we have the document in this desktop or where did i keep it i need to check let's go back let's check this out over here we have it in the desktop itself so let's go back again open uh, we have the texture over here what would be the name of it it's this one so let's go ahead and open that now we can see the issue over here is this part this part is not completed so for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the selection tool select this part copy it paste it move it up and that's it but we have a seam over here and we will try and get that solved and for that what we are going to do is use this clone test you know clone tool over here and we are going to just sample some of the parts and just work on this part let's sample some of the parts and make some adjustment to this so this is just uh, an example you can do a very good job if you stay a little bit focused and do it without any time constraint since i already have a little bit of time constraint so i am working a little faster uh, but since you would be doing it for yourself for a piece don't hesitate to take your time and clean this part up so right now all i am doing is using this clone stamp uh, to get a little bit of a better vibe over here or a better smoother correction so now this is almost done i have this part over here which is protruding i have this part over here which is protruding uh, or which is not 
there so I'll again select this part over here copy paste it and slide it a little bit upward now if we go ahead and see the texture looks fine enough so now all we need to do is export this up so we export replace export again and then we need to go back to our blender scene go to this and select now you see we have our texture completed so yeah that's how this works as well so you can actually go ahead and check that out in the description so thank you thank you for listening thank you uh, for tuning in share comment and do comment what would you like to see next thank you so much see you on the next one